The objective today is to differentiate between a network ID and host ID. So for our table of contents, I'm going to first talk about a little bit of a why in terms of why we're subnetting. This will give you insight into why we have two values in one variable. Spoiler alert, one part of that number is a network ID and the other part is a host ID. So that's number three. We'll learn how to read IPs and differentiate between those two, network and host. Since I'm talking about reading, um, I'm talking about what you probably did in many of your classes. So uh, number four is we're going to talk about the classes of IPs. Then I need you to be very mentally flexible because the way classes relate to subnetting is it's uh, useful and there's a strong connection and there's also not a strong connection and it's a little bit confusing so you'll have to just be uh, flexible when you approach these two terms. Next up I'm just going to talk about how the concept of broadcasting, how you have a broadcast IP that is going to be sending a message to all computers in a particular network so that's a little mind-blowing. And then when you find a network ID and you see just a network ID with zero hosts, that is kind of like the opposite of broadcasting. In that sense, you're only talking to maybe the router that controls or is the gateway into that network. So that's why number seven just says sort of, because when I say the ID is the opposite of broadcast, and that is that there is no device that has that number, well, it's a sort of, because there's a device that has the number. It's just not very useful uh, to communicate with that thing, because that device is not the one requesting any information or any web pages or any um, emails or whatever. So we'll wrap up the lesson by just hammering home the idea that if I'm talking about classes, I'm talking about the first octet. If I'm talking about subnetting, I'm talking about the number of bits that make up the uh, network ID. And then we'll just practice, practice, practice after that. So you're going to be so full of IP knowledge at the end of this. I mean, that's why TCP IP, the IP is just such an important word in networking. At the end of this lesson, you'll probably be pretty sick of hearing this IP word. Though if you're in a kung fu movies, there's a good movie called IP Man or Ip Man, and uh, I would suggest you watch that. Especially after a lesson like this, because you'll need to relax. This gets a little confusing. So, the purpose behind all of this. We don't want the chance of two computers having the same IP address. And remember, a router is a type of computer, so still, we don't want anything to have the same IP address as something else. So we have to follow these rules I'm going to be describing to you. And over the series of all these videos on subnetting, all these rules are not too hard to follow. And the consequence of not following the rules is things just break and won't work. So, I mean, that could be a big deal. That could be a millions of dollars you cost your company. But chances are um, you won't find yourself making that mistake if you're understanding these lessons. Because if you're really getting these things, then you could pass those network tests. There's all sorts of them out there. And usually companies have some built-in redundancy for the humans so that we can make sure that they're um, configuring things right. And just along with these rules is the idea that the system itself will reduce the chance of having problems in the first place. So an IP address gives us two pieces of valuable information. First of all, it tells us which network the device is a part of. And the second thing an IP address can do is it can identify that unique device within the network. So you'll see this word node and host used interchangeably. Node and host are the unique things that we're talking about having an IP address. So your think right share here, what are two things you can learn from an IP address? So only a system administrator needs to learn these things that we're talking about. I guess if you're just a curious human being, you'll probably really benefit and enjoy learning about these things. But this is the important person, right? The system administrator is the one who purchases a range of IPs from Aaron. This is an organization that's in charge of handing out these numbers. So they purchase from Aaron. They need to properly configure their networks with the correct sub mask. So thank you, Aaron. Aaron will be giving you that subnet mask. And when you configure your network with that, you will now have an IP range and these numbers will be able to go out to the computers, the devices that you have in that network. 
The system administrator should know what the network ID for each subnet is and the broadcast address for each of those networks. And in this lesson, we will focus on just reading an IP address. So given a specific subnet mask, we'll be able to know which portion is the network portion and which is the host. While we're doing that, we can start thinking in terms of classes. So in the olden days, a class A address was just for these very large networks, and then class B would be a medium, and class C was pretty small. But you have to know what I'm saying, relatively speaking. Class C is small, though the default subnet mask for that class would give you 254 unique computers to have in the network. So if, in your opinion, 250 computers is small, then you're agreeing with me that Class C is a small thing, small network. And then I do these funny things in class that, at least for me, it helps me learn. I ask you right here to pick a favorite subnet. If you can't go with a favorite number or favorite letter, maybe go with a favorite color. And then I'm giving you the job right now of telling me what is the range of your favorite subnet. This is hopefully going to help you remember at least one range. I absolutely love oranges. I love orange marmalade in my oatmeal, so I'm going with class B. I am not going to forget that class B starts with 128, because to tell you the truth, I probably eat 128 bowls of oatmeal a year. So in that last slide, I talked about we used to use this term classes to refer to big, medium, and small networks. Well, classes is sort of still a thing. If you open up your internet protocol properties on your computer, you could go ahead and click a button that says Class C, and then you'll get this for a default subnet mask. And then you can go ahead and start typing 192 right here, and then when you go to the next octet, this will automatically fill in with this subnet mask. So if you go over here, 192 is the start of Class C, so classes typically have a subnet mask of 24. 24 because each one of these octets is 8 bits. So 8 plus 8 plus 8 gives you 24. And I hope by the time you're watching this video, you know the reason why we're looking at the number 255, 255, 255, because you know that if every one of those bits, those eight bits, are turned on to a one, then when you add up that value, you get 255. So please tell me you already know that. And also, at this point in the lesson, you should have already came in knowing what subnetting means. You see, subnetting is just one of the techniques of assigning a subnet mask. The other technique, at least in the olden days, this was the only technique, uh, but that was to do what's called classful addressing. So how do you create a network ID? Well, the answer is there are two techniques. A computer can do both, usually. So whether you're doing classful addressing by typing in the number only using classes, or you do subnetting, either way, you can use these techniques to get yourself a network ID. So this slide right here basically says the exact thing I told you verbally. So if you're a reader or a visual person, you can go ahead and pause. But I want you to answer this question. What's the difference between using class or subnetting? in order to create a range of IP addresses. And so here's another question for you right away. Based on this picture alone, what do you notice about the last octet in the network address and broadcast address? So these are not classes, forgive me for being confusing, but this is saying network A, B, and C. So over here is network A, and that has, check that out, a class C subnetting mask because it's 255, 255, 255. So um, this network over here will be able to hold 254 unique IP addresses, but it looks like they only have two. You see the switch right here doesn't have an IP address. Though I wonder if it does, or if it should have that number here. Maybe they uh, got rid of it so we're not confused. So let me give that as an extra credit, because off the top of my head, I mean, I couldn't answer that with off the top of my head. I had to sit here and think about it for a second. So uh, rather than just give you the answer, why don't you go ahead and do that for extra credit? Anyways, in this network, and you know I have some really great students who like those kinds of challenges, so pause the video and go find that out. And that right there is real learning, not just the uh, information I'm giving you that is from my head and being teleported into your head. But anyways, okay, this network 
has an ID. If I go down here, I can see that ID right there. And if you need help answering this question, it says the last octet. What's the last octet here? Okay, and then we're going to go over here to the broadcast ID. So if on network A, I send a packet that says 200.1.1.255 is the destination, then when that packet gets here, both computers are going to get that packet. It goes back to my networking in general video where I'm saying that these are computers' names. And usually, people won't pay attention unless you call their name. Oh my god, one of the most frustrating things in the world for a teacher is trying to speak to a whole class. And many people think that only if they're spoken to individually will they actually uh, tune in and pay attention. That's why one of those teacher tricks is to just randomly uh, bring up student name as an example. But you know what? That's very much like computers. These computers will not respond unless you know their exact IP address. Sorry if I sound a little cynical today, but oh my gosh, we're talking about things that are very much like classrooms. And in every good classroom, you're going to at least have one rebel like this guy right here. So that is a good analogy to describe the difference between classful addressing and subnetting. Subnetting is like the rebel. To understand classful addressing, all you need to do is look at the first octet. That number will give you an idea as to what that subnet mask will be. So you see how subnet is within class, just like there's a rebel within every class. But if the network engineer or the system administrator is completely ignoring class and he's just subnetting based on whatever number of bits he wants, then he's going to typically use this dot, like slash notation. So it's going to say slash in a number. And in case you didn't know who this picture was a picture of, this guy's name is slash. So how about that? I hope you never forget the difference between subnetting and class hole addressing now. Looking at this picture, we're really getting more into the objective of the lesson. The objective is no matter whether we're talking about class hole addressing or subnetting, you should still be able to identify the network portion and the host portion of an IP address. So here's two questions for you. What is the network ID and what is the host ID? The answer is in blue is the network ID. If that's what you want to write down, I'm fine with that. But for like this computer, the network ID is 192.168.0. Guess what the network ID for uh, this computer is? It's the same thing. It's in the same network. So 192.168.0. Now what's the host ID? Well, that's everything that's in orange. So I like to usually use X's just to keep your mind from thinking about these network IDs and numbers. But this host ID is 3. This is 4. This is 5. This is 6. Man, I need to stop saying subnet mask in this way. I need to just say slash 24. So class C has a default subnet mask of slash 24. Okay, so it's your turn to practice. Let's hammer home this idea. Here's an IP address, 150.160.12.8. And for now, we'll just practice looking at it from the class perspective. So assume the default mask is being honored here. So I look at this number, 150. I go down here and find out where 150 is in. Remember, this is only the first octet. So I'm looking 1 to 127, no. 128 to 191, yes. So this is a class B network address. And as you look down here and see 255, like don't get confused with these as subnet masks. This is range, OK? Range, not mask. So this is the number you should have down. Since it's in class B, it has a default subnet mask of slash 16. That means the first two octets. OK, now do this one by yourself without me screwing up and confusing you. Go ahead and pause right here. And now I'll give you the answer. Here's another one for you to practice on. So go ahead and pause here. And here's another one for you to go ahead and pause on. And that's the answer for that. Looks like we got another one, so pause here. Answer, please. And there's your answer. OK, one more to go, so make this one a good one. And there's your answer. 
So a good way to approach this is, at the end of the day, the IP address is still just the computer's name, but think of it like a reverse human name. Instead of having the same last name as other members in my family, my network, the computer puts its last name, its family name, first. The Class A IP address range was designed for large networks and class B was designed for small sized networks, class C for the smaller ones. So the way I'm visualizing this is there are some people who have a last name that is very common, right? They would be the class A kind of people, the class A families or networks. These are the Joneses, the Martinezes, the Smiths. And then we have our smaller families in society, and some have really rare last names, so these people would be like the Class C networks. Now, if I had to self-analyze, I think my name would be um, a Class B kind of last name. I don't know, you tell me. And I'm also curious for you to tell me, what do you think your last name is? Is it like a Class A, B, or C? So computers are not humans, that's why their last names come first. And just to test out our theory here, let's make a prediction. So think about what class you think our school IP range is in. How many computers do we have? Well, if you think about four labs total, maybe we're looking at about 100 computers. Are you thinking this is a large network or not? And then I want you to type into Google, what's my IP? The computer will tell you what the IP address is. And you can see if it fits in our model or if it fits your prediction that you just made. And probably right about now, you're not forgetting that just because you're in class A, B, or C doesn't really mean your network has to be limited to that. Default subnet masks are just defaults. It doesn't mean you have to keep that number. Maybe you're a small company and you grow quite large. I imagine you would need more IPs. So as we get into our subnetting portion of the lesson, I'm not going to mess with your mind and give you a number that isn't in um, one of the octets, you know. I'm not going to do this thing where you have to configure something outside of an e even octet boundary. That's a fancy nice word for you. So even octet boundaries will go ahead and stay with in this class. So I really messed up my X's down here, but basically I'm just going to give you a slash 24 or a slash 16 or a slash 8. Do you think I'll give you a slash 32? What could a slash 32 be useful for? Well, also to simplify things, let's say class A means you have a large network. So let's just keep assuming this, okay, people? Then we're going to say uh, class B is medium and class C is small. So keeping with those ideas, I want you to remember that as we start to answer these types of questions. Okay, and, and I want you to remember that it used to be class A, B, and C was big, medium, and small. But with subnetting, that can be completely ruined. So I'm going to have you think in those terms as we approach our subnetting question practice, okay? So just like before, you're going to say what the network ID is, then what the host ID is. And a third nice bring it all together question, you're going to say whether this is a large or small network. So here's the first one. Your IP address is 192.168.123.132, all right? And here's what it is in binary. Now your subnet mask is this thing. So what is your network ID based on this? What is the host ID? And is this big or small? So if I go here, I did the first one for you. This one is tricky, I'm saying, because 192 is in uh, class C. But I placed a slash 16 subnet on it, so technically the network ID is 192.168. That means the host is 123.132. And even though the first octet tells me this IP should be in C class, therefore a smaller network, I believe it is a medium-sized one. I believe it's a medium-sized one because for a subnet mask like this, we could have up to 65,534 possible hosts instead of what usual Class C addresses have. Um, that's 254 hosts. Okay, so I did the first one for you. Let's see if this one can be done all by yourself. So go ahead and figure that out. Pause here. And then here are your answers. I hope you're understanding this. Okay, here's the next one, so pause it and give your best effort. There's that answer if you need it. This one looks pretty large. It's like 16 million devices with unique IPs on it that you can have. 
Okay, and here's my big challenge one. Let's see if you can get this right. This is me going back on my word and not giving you an even octet boundary to deal with, but it's an extra credit here. How about that? All right, and just because I can't leave anybody hanging, I get too uh, guilty feeling about that. Um, here's your answer. So using numbers like this, I had figured out that it has a net mask, a subnet mask of 255.248, and then to find the network ID, the you can do a little trick. I know I haven't showed you that yet, so that's going to be in a future lesson where you calculate the network ID. It's easy. And if you're a resourceful student and found another resource to use, um, I like a tunnel up subnet calculator I found online. Or I guess it's tunnels up multiple tunnels are up. That just doesn't even make sense, but it's a company name, right? So using their subnet calculator, you could have typed that in and got your answers that I have displayed right here. And what size of network is this? Well, I mean, 524,000 uh, devices is a pretty large number to me. I mean, that's half a million. So I'm going to go ahead and say that was a large network. So remember to have fun with these lessons. I googled uh, questions like, what's the smallest subnet mask you can have? And then I found this little cheat sheet. Here it is. It looks pretty helpful. So too bad you can't take these things into the testing center with you when you have to take a networking test. And also I found this good discussion just because you should never stop on the first Google hit you get. So as I scroll down here, it looks like someone's studying for a networking exam called the ICND2. And so this person's username is subnet mass. That's pretty interesting. But it's just a good discussion pretty much over a uh, maybe silly question. I don't think it's silly at all. But it's a good example of a curiosity question. The thing I really want you students to have more than anything is just curiosity. The person asks, because Cisco hasn't mentioned anything smaller than a slash eight at my level, I can only assume that there would theoretically be a slash seven or smaller in some routing table somewhere, but I can't find any proof of it. And I know that generally this would be impractical, but it isn't exactly ruled out by the math itself. So anyone know this bit of trivia? My Google foo isn't strong enough for this. So somebody eventually used a cool command you might want to experiment with called trace route. So I go right up here. So nothing larger than a slash eight is being advertised on the public internet. And this is the regex they used. Hopefully you get to that level someday. And it looks like they went all over the place looking for something smaller than a slash eight and couldn't find it. So that's an example of being curious and having fun. And just because we spent time on those other websites, here's a slew of think right shares for you to answer. How is a Cedar cheat sheet like the one I showed you useful? What is this term I use called trace route? What is the default subnet mask for a class B address? And the last one is, are you curious about anything else I mentioned in the lesson today? Okay, so that's it, your DOL for today. I just wanted you to zero in on this network ID versus host ID portion. And a few more things along the way. One more practice for the road here. So what is the network ID and what is the host ID of these two numbers, please?